so welcome to another video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and I'm, I'm Grant. He's starting to cut me out. Sorry. Right. We'll and I'm not Alexander or Grant. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, he's like he's just hold his hand up. Like, yeah, right. No, well, we'll just go again. It's okay. So, welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and I'm Grant. And I'm Mark. Hey, I didn't know I was going to be included there. Okay, so we're here. It's Origins 2019, and we're here with Mark from Flying Pig Games. And today we are taking a look at. Low resistance, and we're going to kind of throw it over to you for a bit. So this is actually from Tiny Battle Publishing. I it is. It is. Uh huh. And this is not necessarily uh, a normal war game that we would expect from that company. So what, what have we got here? So it's a. I like the theme. It is a dice and card game. It's a war game theme. Uh, you take the. You play the part of a French resistance leader leading a band of fighters against the German occupation. Um, the way that's accomplished is, what your goal is, is to amass 12 glory points. As a French resistance leader, you want to defeat the Bosch, but you want to defeat them better than the other French resistance leaders do. So you want to amass 12 glory points or break the other bands. And by breaking the other bands, that's more or less stealing their recruits or just getting their recruits to go away. I mean, there's no... Uh, as we were kidding about earlier, there's no French on French action here. This is just, you're trying to amass glory points quicker than your opponents are trying to amass them. The way you do that is this. You've got these mission cards, uh, backs look like this, fronts look like this. I'll lay a few down, you probably won't be able to see them when I lay them down, but the point of these are, um, they have, different colored dice on them. They may have a white die or they may have a black die. The black die can get kind of screwy because it could be like a nine or something. And during your turn, your goal is to try to solve these cards. Now the way you solve the cards is, you roll six white die. You can then put these die on the card. If the card is, for instance, a white five and a black nine, you have to put a die equal to, a single die, equal to or greater than that five. You can put as many dice as you would like that are equal to or greater than that nine. If you do that on that card, you tap it, and you go on and you can try one of the other two cards. Every once in a while, as we know from playing at once, you can get all three. Usually you have to choose what you want and what you'll do with it. Uh, on this side of the card, right here, it shows what you will get if you do solve the card. These blue stars represent glory points. Uh, sometimes you'll get a card like this is four and eight, and if you solve this card by putting down a five or a six, and a five and a si or six, you'll get two new recruits. These are added to your totals. Now there are some bad cards too. Uh, for example, these Panzer Grenadiers. You also have to try to solve this card, in this case of white five or six, or some that equals six. If you don't solve it, if you have to leave that there on the table, you're going to lose two recruits. That's annotated by it being uh, red back to these circles as opposed to the gray backs that you see on this card right here. Uh, one of the strategies is, of course, is if you can lose those recruits, you leave it on the table, and the person that follows then has to try to solve that card. And, so, the, and the dice every time, you're going to roll them. If you don't roll well, what happens? Well, what options do you have? Good question. If you roll, like I said, you have six dice. You roll them once. If it's a terrible roll, you can get a mulligan, and the way the mulligan works is, is you take one of the die and you just put it aside. You're not going to be able to use that this turn, but you can re-roll the dice, and that can save your bacon uh, and help you. Another thing that uh, happens with the dice, I bet most of you watching have heard of an exploding die. Gavin, yeah, but it's in Webster's. Uh, but anyhow, if you roll a six, you can then roll a blue die. 
Uh, and these, the blue dye are added. You don't lose your six or anything. Whatever you get on the blue dye, you add. Unfortunately, if you roll a exploding die and you get a one, you lose a recruit. Uh, so there's some pressure left there. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I say it's 60% chance, that's, why not? But, exactly. But, but if you're down to your final left. recruit, yeah, you can't risk it. that 16% seems it's very pretty risky. Big. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple other interactive things you can do to kind of mess with the other people. You can buy these Say Laguerre cards, and by buying them, uh, you, it'll let you take glory points from people, sometimes seal recruits, other times it'll give you some type of fire support, like Alexander had an MG34 card in the last game that we played, almost let him win. Very and Herm close. Lutman came from out of nowhere and won uh, much to our chagrin. He really won twice, frankly. He won but, twice because he could have won the turn before. And was all gracious three, enough to Gracious knock. enough oh, to right. say, I'm, yeah. In, in reality, all three of us were screaming at him <laughs> how, what to do, but he's a little bit old, so he didn't quite... And he's not here to defend himself, so right. we can say So that. we can yeah. say whatever, we, can say whatever, we, whatever want we want now. Um, you got some variable player powers, too. Each of the yeah. resistance members have some special abilities, which yeah, is cool. Exactly. You can do things like uh, give somebody a recruit and get two glory points for doing that. I mean, so as you can see, you're a good guy. You're helping out the other band, so help your glory gets, yeah. you know, bigger. Uh, so it all makes sense in kind of a weird, fantastical, historical way. Yeah. And a very fun game. Right? Yes, this is a very fun game. Now, it is a, a huge kind of a, a diversion from the kind of games that Flying Pig and Time to Battle do, which mm -hmm. are much more hex and counter, counter war games. War games yeah. Was there something in particular that inspired you to make this kind of a game with this theme? Uh, I'll be very excruciatingly honest. Yes. Uh, my daughter owns a after school uh, care. Alexander's going, wow, I didn't know we were going to go here. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, owns an after school care center in Richmond, Virginia. And she, they were having a game week, and he, she wanted her dad to come, uh, you know, do a game. Well, I didn't think old school tactical was going to work with some six year old. Yeah. This was it's an easy system to learn, right, but it's, it's not going to work with six year olds. <laughs> so, to make a short story kind of long, uh, it got me into thinking about easier games and more people can play. I, I designed a game for that week called The Rescue of Queen Jan Jan, which is Janice is my wife's name. And it was not kind of from history, just right, right, not Mark's from history. Name. It was kind of this card game where you've got different trails you're going in. And I went right out of doing that into designing this because I wanted something my whole family could play. And they do, and they all really enjoy this yeah. game. So that's why. Just to have a game that I designed that I play with my family rather than it always be exploding kittens, you know, so, <laughs> which I love. I'm right, just right. saying. Right. After a so hundred times. Yeah, that's why. So yeah. when is this? You said this was going to Kickstarter. Well, we'll What's the plan? We'll take this to Kickstarter. Right now, our company's Kickstarter plan is, um, as many of you know, uh, Crowbar is over there in the final throes of production. Looks so good, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they were able to great. see the uh, production copy of it, but we don't have the thousands here yet. Uh, anyhow, we're going to run the Kickstarter for Old School Tactical. Uh, it will three. kick off either the 27th or 25th of June. Uh, and I'll let everybody know. The page has already been approved. It's just some tweaking I want to do, and it collided with Origin, so it got put off a couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to run that. Then when Crowbar gets in and we ship that, and we have Old School Tactical Volume 3 off to the printers, then we're going to run this. My estimation on that is that this will go up on Kickstarter late August, something okay. like that. And is there an estimation on what a price point for this might be? Around $35 is what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, it's a it's a very fun, quick playing game. Yeah, it doesn't take like long it. to play either, which is nice. Uh, you just kind of roll through it. It can it can support five players. I five, three to five, three to five, uh, and it's just a fun. Like you said, it's a war themed kind of dice mashing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of take that game. too. You know, you're it does. you're stealing things from people, and but it's fun. It's in good spirit. Right? Sure, and that's fun. always fun is to you know mess with the people. That's yeah. what gets the yucks going right. and all that. So yeah. But yeah, so this uh, appreciate you showing us this and letting us play it with you. That was 
So this is La Resistance. From I love the way you rolled that up. <laughs> <laughs> from Tiny Battle, and this is coming to Kickstarter later on in the year. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for watching.